Hi everyone, it's me, Auntie Shay, and I'm here to read to you. Uh, this is the third week of my book series, uh, and this week I'm going to read a funny story, one of my favorites, Walter the Farting Dog. This book is a part of a series, and this is the first book of its series, When Walter is First Introduced to His Family. Thanks for joining me. For everyone who's ever felt misjudged or misunderstood, this book goes out to you. Walter the Farting Dog. Betty and Billy brought Walter home from the dog pound. Nobody wanted him, said Billy, but we love him, said Betty. Well, he smells awful, said their mother. I think you'd better give him a bath. Mother walked in and said, he still smells awful. And that's when they got the first clue. The telltale bubbles in the water. He's probably just a little nervous, said mother. Hopefully. Maybe his stomach must be upset, but Walter's stomach wasn't upset. Walter's stomach was fine. He was perfectly normal. He just farted a lot. Poor Walter. Can you imagine having that problem? He did it when he bathed. He did it when he played with Betty and Billy. He did it when he walked around the house. He did it in the dining room. He did it in the kitchen. And he did it in his sleep. Fart, fart, fart. That dog farts morning, noon, and night, said father. He can't help it, daddy, said Betty and Billy. They didn't mind Walter's farts. So what if he farts, Billy said to Betty when they were alone in their room with Walter. Betty agreed. Walter agreed too. He sat there looking innocently around, farting. Take him to the vet, father said. Off to the vet. Farting, said the vet or rectal flatulence, as we say in the medical profession, and he prescribed to change Walter's diet. I guess Walter got to try some new food. Hopefully that'll help his problem. They gave Walter every kind of food. He farted. They tried him on cat food. They gave him hot dogs, hamburgers, and lettuce and tomato sandwiches. They gave him fried chicken. They gave him rabbit food. They made him a vegetarian. No matter what that dog eats, he turns it into farts, roared father. Poor Walter. Carrots, corn on a cob, french fries, lettuce, tomato sandwiches, cat food. This poor guy cannot stop farting. Walter got the blame for everyone else's farts, too. If Uncle Irv let one slip, he just wouldn't stood near Walter. Then all he had to say was, Walter! And then everyone would just look at poor Walter. What a shame. It's bad enough Walter gets blamed for his own farts, but then Uncle Irv and even the cat is giving him the judgy eye. He has to go back to the pound, said father. No, dad, please, begged Betty and Billy. Don't send Walter away. He goes tomorrow, said father. They pleaded. Walter farted. <laughs> it was all over. That night, Betty and Billy cried in their beds, and Walter looked at them unhappily. Oh, Walter, said Betty, you've got to stop farting. Because father is going to send you back to the pound tomorrow, said Billy. Aw. Poor Walter. Poor kids. They love him. Walter knew how serious the situation was. 
he'd never see Betty and Billy again. He resolved to hold his farts in forever. When Betty and Billy fell asleep, he walked down to the kitchen to see if there was anything around to eat. He managed to open the cupboard door with his nose and found a 25 pound bag of low fart dog biscuits that the vet had prescribed for him, which made him fart even more. Even though he knew they made him fart more, he couldn't resist. He ate the entire bag. Very tasty, Walter thought to himself. Can you believe he ate the entire bag of low fat, low fart biscuits? And then he went and lay down on the sofa. A gigantic gas bubble began to build inside of him. This is going to be trouble, he said to himself nervously. He was afraid of what might happen if he let it go. He thought maybe the house would explode, so he kept it in. It wasn't easy. In fact, it was torture. But he had resolved never to fart again. His future depended on it. As he lay there with his tail wrapped tightly between his legs, he heard a noise at the window. Hmm. Who could it be at the window? He watched it open slowly. A pair of burglars came through. They dropped silently into the kitchen. Watch out for the dog, said the burglars. Oh, he won't bite, said the other. He is a wimp. Walter may have been them, except he was so filled with gas that he couldn't even move. They tied a rag around his snout so he couldn't bark. Okay, whispered the first burglar. Let's clear this place out. They took everything they could get their hands on. Walter wanted to stop them, but he was having unbearable gas pains. He rode on his back, waved his paws in the air, and nursed his teeth together. We've got it all, said the second burglar. Let's go. He cleared the place out. Now look, everything. Shh. That's when Walter let it fly. It was the worst part of his life. It made a tremendous noise and shot him all the way across the room. A hideous cloud filled the air. The burglars clutched their throats, unable to breathe. With tears in their eyes, they raced for the window. They tried to grab their bag with all of their valuables in it, but their arms were too weak. Let's get out of here. Look at Walter shooting across the room from that explosive fart. They jumped out the window and ran up the block, choking and gasping for air. Still blinded by Walter's attack, they stepped into the headlights of an approaching police car. Hold it right there, the policeman said. When father and mother came down in the morning, they found the open window and they saw the bag with their valuables in it and Walter was sitting beside it. He still had the rag tied around his snout. You'd have to say he looked heroic. He saved the silverware, cried mother. He saved the VCR, cried father. Good dog, Walter. You're a good dog. You're our dog, even if you fart all the time. Way to go, Walter, saving the day. And so the family learned to live with Walter, the heroic dog. And that's the end of our tale. Great job, Walter. Thanks for joining me for the reading of Walter, the farting dog. Next week, I'll be reading My Silly Auntie, based on me, Shay the Silly Auntie. And you guys have a great weekend and see you soon. Love you. Mm -hmm.